In this video, we'll demonstrate updates made in Mirantis OpenStack 7 Kilo to Sahara, the OpenStack data processing facility. Sahara provides simple tools for deploying different flavors of Hadoop cluster on OpenStack, managing them, and submitting jobs to them, making all parts of the process quick and repeatable. Sahara lives under OpenStack Horizon's data processing tab. As you can see, we've added some new features, for example, guides, which are like wizards. One new guide is for Hadoop cluster configuration and deployment. The other helps you define and execute data processing jobs. We've also added to and updated the plugins that make Sahara compatible with a range of Hadoop distributions, as well as Apache Spark. As you can see, we have vanilla Apache Hadoop 2.6, Apache Spark 1.3.1, the Hortonworks plugins for versions 2.2 and 2.3, and of course, for the Cloudera plugin, version 5.4.0. A basic application of Sahara is to define and launch cluster templates, which aggregate node group templates for masters and workers, plus rules for anti-affinity and high availability that guide deployment. Here, we're defining a cluster template using Hortonworks. As you can see, we already have a Cloudera cluster template. We'll start by selecting the HDP plugin, noting the version. It takes a few seconds to load the plugin, so we'll skip ahead. When the dialog pops up, we can name our template. We can also configure anti-affinity here to ensure that components of the same types will not be deployed on the same hosts, forcing distribution of load and avoiding single points of failure. Also in this dialog, we can check boxes to request that critical master daemons like the name node and the resource manager be deployed in a high availability configuration, as we're doing here. If you're using HBase, Sahara can create HA for region servers as well. Now we'll add our node groups. We'll add a manager, a master node, and three worker nodes. Again, as you see, we can specify anti-affinity if we need it. And then we'll click Create. The cluster template can be launched directly onto OpenStack. Now we'll demonstrate another way of approaching new Hadoop cluster creation, doing so from scratch using our new cluster creation guide. We'll start by clicking to create a new cluster. We'll choose the Hadoop flavor and version plugin we want to use. In this case, we'll use Cloudera. Next, the guide prompts us to create the master node group, so we'll give the template a name, master CDH. We'll attach a flavor of VM for it and put it in the Nova availability zone, and we'll specify our external network as the source for floating IPs. In the next tab, we'll choose the processes we wish to deploy, which are the job history, the server, name node, and the resource manager, and click Create. The guide now prompts us to configure the worker node groups, in this case, just one group, which we'll call worker CDH. We'll choose the instance flavor and other details, and we'll select the processes that will run in the group, an HDFS data node and a node manager. With the node group templates created, the next and final step is, as before, to create a cluster template. We'll call this one CDH cluster template. Once again, we can define the anti-affinity groups for different processes. Then we select the master and worker node group templates. We'll have three workers in this cluster. And we'll also add a Cloudera manager component so we can connect to the manager and have a nice UI to interact with the cluster itself. Clicking Create stores the template. Finally, we can use the cluster template to launch a cluster. Let's give it a name, Demo Cluster. We'll add a key pair in case we need to SSH into individual nodes, and launch. Our new cluster comprises a total of five VM instances. We can drill down into it, see the different components, and locate important information, such as the URL IP address of our Cloudera Manager web UI. Here are the instances comprising the cluster. Each has an internal IP, as well as a public management IP that we can connect to. 
The cluster information reminds us of the different groups we've defined, the Cloudera Manager, the Master, and the Worker nodes. And if we've defined any unique configurations of other services, we can see them here as well. Now let's go in and see how the Cloudera Manager web UI works. We have the password and username available for us. Open a new tab, log in, and we can control our cluster directly using the preferred tool. Now that we have a cluster, let's spin up some jobs. First, we'll do so by defining the job template directly. This particular job is a launchpad log that we're summarizing via an Apache pig script that we've written. The input data is saved in our OpenStax object storage, and we want to save output data in object storage as well. To launch this job, all we need to do is provide the input, a bucket name for the desired output, and designate the cluster we just created. Sahara manages submission of the job to the cluster and monitors cluster status. As we can see, the job is completed and successful. Now we go to our object storage in the demo folder and can look at our output. This is the output, and the input files are here as well. We can download the output and view it. Another way to submit a job is to use our job execution guide, which offers a gentler, more wizard-like experience. We start with choosing the job type. Again, this is our pig job. If we need to define additional data sources, we can do that, though in this case, input and output are already defined. The output, once again, is a job template that lets us run our job again and again if we want to. Save the job template, launch, and once again, Sahara manages our cluster. And another successful job is completed. To learn more about using OpenStack Sahara to manage your data analytic workloads on OpenStack, please visit mirandas.com.